In this example problem, we're going to use the stiffness method and we'll use it to find reactions for a coplanar, that is a 2D truss. The key concepts we'll use are partitioning the structure stiffness matrix, calculating displacements for a truss, and calculating reactions given those displacements. And here's our truss. It has five members, four nodes, and is supported with a pin and a roller. It is the same structure we used in the example for section 5 of chapter 14. We're going to determine the reactions for the structure using the stiffness method, and we're going to use the structure stiffness matrix, that is capital K, that we obtained from the previous example. And here's the approach we're going to follow. This is actually a determinant truss, so we're going to begin by finding the reactions by the equations of equilibrium. Then we'll begin the stiffness method approach and we'll partition, partition the structure stiffness matrix. We'll then use parts of the structure stiffness matrix to find displacements and then we'll use those displacements to find reactions and then we'll compare those reaction results. Which we expect will be identical to within round off error. Step one, find the reactions by the equations of equilibrium. Now it's a fair question to ask, why are we using the stiffness method to analyze a truss that we could do quicker quicker by hand? And the answer is, whenever you're testing out a new analysis method, either one you've learned by hand or testing out one embedded in new computer software, it's wise to try a problem for which you know the solution. Therefore, we're going to use a determinant truss in this example problem so that we can confirm that the method produces the predicted results. In essence, we're confirming that the method works and we're confirming that we know how to use the method properly. So getting back to step one, at node four, we have a reaction and I'll label node 4 also node A. So we have reaction AX. We have reaction AY. And I'll draw these reactions in the directions of the degrees of freedom as labeled. I'll label this node B. And we have horizontal reaction bx, again I'll draw it in the direction of the degree of freedom. Now to apply equilibrium. Let's first sum forces in the vertical direction. I'll choose up to be positive. We have the unknown reaction at A minus the two kilonewton applied load. So Ay 
is a positive 2 kilonewtons, it is in the direction drawn up. Now let's sum moments about point B. I can choose either direction to be positive for this summation. I will choose clockwise as positive because everything contributes in that clockwise direction. Our unknown AX through 2 meters is clockwise and our applied force 2 kilonewtons through 2 meters is clockwise as well. So I solve for AX and I get a negative 2 kilonewtons. It is not to the right as drawn. Then I sum forces in the X choose to the right as positive. I get a contribution from AX. I have my unknown BX. I solve for my unknown BX and I get 2 kilonewtons positive so it is to the right as drawn. Now step 2. Let's partition the matrix. Which I have provided below. This is the structure stiffness matrix for the truss as we calculated it in the previous example. And we're going to use parts of this matrix in the following equations. We have forces that are known, so I'll give it the subscript K. Those are the applied loads to the truss equals the part of the stiffness matrix we'll call 1, 1, and this is not the coefficient 1, 1, but these are actually all degrees of freedom rows that are free degrees of freedom and these are all free degrees of freedom and hence the ones times the displacements we don't know but are looking for plus all coefficients the rows that correspond to free degrees of freedom and columns that correspond to supported degrees of freedom times the known deformations which in this case are all zero. So we won't need this chunk but we will need this chunk we'll also need pieces of the matrix, the stiffness matrix. Once we have found our unknown displacements, we can use it to calculate our unknown forces, that is, our reactions, by using the coefficients with rows associated with supported degrees of freedom and columns associated with free degrees of freedom times the displacements we will have just calculated plus the coefficients associated with supported degrees of freedom times are known displacements but in this case they're all zeros and so we won't need this chunk. So we need this piece and this piece and our structure stiffness matrix is associated with or contains information for eight degrees of freedom
and we chose the numbering sequence on our structure such that degrees of freedom 1 through 5 are all free degrees of freedom, unsupported. So I will partition my matrix this way. Because degrees of freedom 6, 7, and 8 are all supported degrees of freedom. which means that this chunk is what I referred to as K11. This chunk is what I referred to as K21. This chunk, if we had needed it, K12. And this chunk, if we had needed it, K22. So to find the unknown displacements, we're going to need this piece with A and E multiplied in. So step three, let's find displacements. And we saw on the previous slide I have my known applied loads equals K11 times my unknown displacements. So to solve for these unknown displacements, we get, or we need to take this matrix and pre-multiply each side of the equation by its inverse, which means this becomes, when multiplied by its inverse, the identity, and we just have the vector of displacements equals the inverse of K11 times the co the vector of known forces QK. Well, normally we don't actually invert the stiffness matrix. Instead, we perform Gaussian elimination in order to calculate this out. But I have calculated the inverse of that 5 by 5 matrix and provided the results here. So if I scribble this out, we'll get our unknown du equals this matrix times qk. And remember, these are degrees of freedom that are free, unsupported, and so we multiply it by the known loads which are applied to the free degrees of freedom. And if we look back at our structure, degree of freedom 1 has no applied load. Degree of freedom 2 has a negative 2 kilonewtons. Degrees of freedom 3, 4, and 5 all have no applied load. So QK becomes 0 minus 2 kilonewtons 0, 0, 0. And now we need to multiply these two matrices together to obtain the vector of unknown displacements. So as we do that we have this term times the 0, which is 0, plus this term, times the minus 2 kilonewtons, 
plus these two multiplied together, plus these, plus these. Next one. This term times zero, plus this term, times the minus two kilonewtons. And each of these three are zero, so these coefficients don't have impact. This one. Times the minus two kilonewtons from QK. And then the rest of the Qs are zero. This one is zero, then we have this one. Times the minus two kilonewtons, and then the rest of the Qs are zero. And our last row, this one is zero. We have contribution from this one, minus the two kilonewtons, and then the last three contribute zero. When we put that together and evaluate the expression, we get a positive 4.0 kilonewton meter divided by AE for the displacement in degree of, at degree of freedom one for degree of freedom two, when we multiply these together, we get a negative 19.3138 kilonewton meter divided by AE. Next one, when we evaluate it, we get a minus 4.8284 kilonewton meter divided by AE. Next one is identical. And the last one. And a reminder, these are degrees of freedom one, two, three, four, and five. Now step four. Let's find the reactions. And as a reminder, we find those unknown forces by using the portion of the structure stiffness matrix to one, that is force at degrees of freedom that are supported due to deformation at degrees of freedom that are unsupported. And I'll call that du, although they're now known. I have retyped that chunk of the stiffness matrix we need so let me scribble this out because we are going to now find our, re our reactions when we multiply it by the displacements we calculated given here. So we have the positive 4.0 kilonewton meter divided by AE, the negative 19 point three one three eight kilonewton meter divided by AE the negative four point eight two eight four kilonewton meter divided by AE negative four point eight two eight four kilonewton meter divided by AE 
and the negative 4.0 kilonewton meter divided by AE. And remember these are degrees of freedom 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. These are degrees of freedom 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And these are degrees of freedom that are supported 6, 7, and 8. So when we combine these and start multiplying them, I have the 0 times the 4, 0 times the minus 19, plus this term, times this term, plus this term times this term plus this term times this term. Now the next row. We have this term and I forgot that all of these are multiplied by AE there we go, times the 4 plus 0 from the second term plus this quantity times this quantity to which I add this quantity, which happens to be in this case exactly opposite sign and same magnitude. So these two pieces cancel and then we add zero. So really it's only this part that will contribute to our second row or our second reaction. And our last one, these two each cause zero terms here, 0.3536 per meter times the negative 4.8284 kilonewton meters divided by AE plus this one times this one which once again will cancel which leaves only the last term needing to be calculated to find our reactions. Don't forget we have the AE, so the AE in the numerators cancels all the AEs in the denominators. The meter in the numerator cancels the meter in the denominator. So we'll end up with units of kilonewtons for each of these reactions. That's a good sign. And when we evaluate these expressions we get plus two kilonewtons minus two kilonewtons and plus two kilonewtons. I remember these are degrees of freedom 6, 7, and 8. Now step 5. Let's compare our reaction results.
from the stiffness method we just found and again if I label these as A and B so that this reaction BX is the reaction at degree of freedom 6 AX is the reaction at degree of freedom 7 and AY degree of freedom 8 we had these results which give us an AX degree of freedom 7 equal to a negative 2 kilonewtons it is not to the left uh, to the right AY which is degree of freedom 8 a positive 2 kilonewtons it is up and BX which is degree of freedom 6 we get a positive 2 kilonewtons it is to the right is drawn now if we go back to our equilibrium equations our results for AX AY and BX were as shown AX, AY and BX. And they are an exact match, which is what we would expect to within round off error. Now let's go back and review the process we followed. Since chapter 14 is the first time we discuss the stiffness method, I thought we'd begin with a determinant truss, a truss we can find the information using just static equilibrium, and then we could compare our stiffness results to confirm that we understand how to apply the method. So we began by finding reactions using the equations of equilibrium. Then to begin the stiffness method, we used the structure stiffness matrix which we obtained in the previous example and, it, and I provided it here and we partitioned that matrix. We distinguished between the unsupported or free degrees of freedom and the supported degrees of freedom and we partitioned both the columns and the rows the coefficients that, ha that denote forces at the free degrees of freedom due to displacements at the free degrees of freedom we called K11. Coefficients that correspond to forces at the supported degrees of freedom due to deformations at the free degrees of freedom we denoted by K21 and we took the inverse of K11 times the known forces that is the applied load vector and we calculated the displacements at the free degrees of freedom. We then used those to multiply with K21 and we calculated the reaction forces at the supported degrees of freedom we then compared those results to the results we obtained using equilibrium equations and we found them to be an exact match as expected well done